Hello there. It is your Sunday edition of Collider Mailbag. I am Perry Nemiroff, and this is a very ready-to-go Mark Riley. Am I'm, I reading this right? I am ready to go. Yes, indeed. Yes, I like the enthusiasm. Of but course. before we jump into the questions, we have our usual housekeeping to take care of. This isn't only a video show. It's also in podcast form as well. So check it out on the Collider Movie Talk feed. And questions come from all over the place. I'm going to start with the email, so I say it right today. The email is mailbag at collider.com. I had to close Boom. my eyes to visualize it. You can also check out Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Submit your questions there. You ready for it, Riley? You ready yeah, for it? We're yeah, just going to oh, jump I'm right ready. in. We're I like mean, firing through this today. Got my Star Wars figures. Yeah, I'm ready. I've got my odd combination of Burbank Beer Festival glasses and a little something creepy from Suspiria, if you check it out. Where is it? Is it a ghost? No, it's... Oh. It's this. What is that? I showed it to Roka on yesterday's show. What is it? You're going to have to check out the movie to find out. Oh, my God. This was, probably doesn't end well. It's a creepy thing to get in the mail. Yeah. This is like, but that's I how mean, it came. And it, it was all, it was man, all. It could be a back scratcher. It could it be. Probably just cuts in. That, yeah, yeah. You don't want to think about how that's used in the movie. Oh, my and God. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. So you're warned. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. That's yeah, a thing I that I own Suspiria. now. Suspiria. Jeez. <laughs> all right. Goal. Joseph Ashley, take us out of this creepiness with your email question. Joseph Ashley writes, hi, Collider. Do you think Kevin? Kevin Feige strategically planned for Iron Fist than Luke Cage to be the weakest link in Netflix Marvel shows for them to eventually get canceled and move them to the Disney streaming service. If Netflix cancels Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and The Punisher due to creative differences, will it hurt Netflix as the mouse who swallows Hollywood becomes the next film studio to take over? How do you read this? Wow. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to figure out the last part of it. Um, but the first part that st stands out to me is strategically making these shows bad. No. That, that, no, that, that wouldn't happen. Um, I think you can, you can really look at um, Iron Fist and see the negative reaction to that series. The first season wasn't well received critically. I'm imagining then it can transfer over to views because I watched Daredevil, I watched Jessica Jones, and then I started to fall off uh, I watched a little bit of Luke Cage, and it wasn't because of the show or anything. But by the time Iron Fist comes around, I'm not watching it. So I, I don't. I, I to say strategically making it bad is just something that they're not going to do. There's so many people involved in these shows. Mm -hmm. There's so many creatives involved in these shows. They're putting their best foot forward. It just didn't land. Um, whether or not then Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and Punisher get canceled. I mean, I'm looking at it. it. It could be. It could be. These are moving over to the streaming service. Mm -hmm. We do have the big Fox deal. We do have this big Disney streaming service. So, yeah, I, I think that if anything, if they get canceled, it's because Disney wants them on their streaming service. The word strategically planned. Yeah, that's that's not the case no, here. And no. also, Kevin Feige isn't involved in these shows, so it's not no. like he manipulated the situation whatsoever. He's like I think the this emperor. Is... He's like the emperor in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, really. He's just like yeah. <laughs> no, he's I'm the fan of menace. Yeah. Wait, wait until someone uh, photoshops something with like lightning attacking Iron sure. Fist and Luke Cage now. But I do. So that's a big fat no on my part. I don't yeah. think that any of this was planned in a way to make sure they were the ones to go first or anything like that. I right. think it's just about the quality of the shows and the yeah. response that the shows got. But with Netflix, I think they can stand to lose all of these things because they played this game smart. So when Netflix started out, it was all about getting all this content together. You had to have a Netflix subscription because if you wanted to watch a movie, there was a good chance that it was there. Yeah. Then all the studios caught on and they're like, well, why are we renting out our stuff when we can just have our own subscription service and make yeah. all that money? Now they're taking it all away. The smart thing that Netflix did, though, was they spent their bajillion, zillion, however many dollars they have to build their own original library. Library. Yep. So now you still have some movies owned by other studios available to watch on Netflix, but now they have all of this must-see content that forces you to keep your Netflix subscription service. Yep. I don't think any of these shows are going to carry over to that Disney streaming service. I think they are proving that they're putting all of their focus on those limited series that they're creating for characters that already exist in the MCU, mm -hmm. and Netflix will still live happily ever after. Yeah. 
I can buy that too. Wow, that question made me schwitz for some reason. There it is. All right, you want to read number two? Yeah, Instagram. It's coming from Instagram, at C underscore boast. Writes, hey, Collider crew, with the horror franchise seeing a resurgence recently, do you think it's possible for It Chapter 2 to have a bigger opening weekend than It Chapter 1 did? Thanks, and keep up the great work. So if I'm playing the odds here and I'm yeah. making a bet, it seems like the safer bet to say no, just because that first It movie made such an astronomical amount at the box office that I don't think anyone out there could have predicted. Right. But... Then I think about taking a very similar stance on Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. And I think to myself, maybe you should take a risk on this one. And I think I am going to take a risk on this one because, yet again, that It movie is going to be positioned so perfectly yeah. in the release calendar where it's got that September 6th release date. So it's going to be coming hot on the heels of a lull, of the end of August lull. So yeah. with August next year... The big weekend is that first weekend where we get Dora the Explorer, New Mutants, and the Fast and Furious spinoff movie. Right. The only wild card in there that I think could make a nice chunk of change is that Artemis Fowl movie from Disney. I'm right. not really sure what to make of that right now, though, yeah. but... Other than those, then you have all of this time for all the buzz to die out, and then it's time for the beginning of September to be a major moneymaker time, which is basically something that the first It movie semi-created, and then The Nun played into that. Yeah. So then, who knows? Maybe that tradition is going to continue now, and that's just going to be a hot release time for horror movies. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm taking a risk as well, and I'm going off of just gut and just looking at what happened with It. Now, you can open huge and then fall off because it's not very good, right? You yeah. have audiences flocking to the theater opening weekend for it. And that it was a huge opening because it was just this perfect lightning in a bottle kind of moment, horror kind of genre happening, the resurgence, the, the renaissance, as they're saying. And then you have this great marketing that comes out that the trailer started to work. Not that EW thing that came out first, but the trailer started to work and people just really were into it. And then they're, they keep going back. They see it opening weekend. I mean, remind, this thing made over $700 million worldwide. That's repeat viewing over and over and over again. And the critics loved it. So you got to think now with this A-list cast coming in, James McAvoy, mm -hmm. Bill Hader, Jessica Chastain, you're going to see, I, I just, I don't see how it couldn't at least be matched in that weekend, but I'm going over. Yeah. I think it's going to beat it, but not by a lot because that's, that's a huge opening. But to all your points then, because of the lull, because of it being positioned in a, in a great spot, I think we're going to see it just a bit over the hundred million or whatever it made. What was it? 107? I think it uh, was like 125 was opening it that? weekend. Oh, yeah. I think it might have been. I can double check that. It was, it was a crazy amount. It opening but weekend. One of the cool things about it also is it's got the benefit of creating its own one-two punch. Yeah. So you have the first, uh, you have the second it, which has an all-star cast that people will flock to see them in this movie. But then the first movie also turned its starting ensemble into major, major, like famed superstars where yeah. these kids have tons of followers on social media. They have their own fan base now. So now yeah. you're going to get everybody converging on the one movie. And for the record, opening weekend, it made one hundred and twenty three point four million dollars, yeah. wound up making over seven hundred million yeah. worldwide. So, yeah, I think it'll probably go a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm going to be conservative with my guests. Yeah, but it's still going to go over. I'm you know, 125. I think it could do 125 right. opening weekend. I could get behind that. Yeah, right now at least. Yeah, right now at least. <laughs> give me give me some time to to change it if I need to. Yeah. Um. All right. Question number three is an email question from Glenn Myron who writes. In this age of remakes, I believe it is only a matter of time until some studio will decide to do a remake of The Birds. So I wonder, who do you think would be able to fill Hitchcock's shoes and direct it? Who should write it? Which guy? Well, I thought about this, and The Birds is a very interesting movie. It's, you know, it's, a, it's an outlandish scenario, but it's also something that, it, it's a creature feature, if you think about it. Of course. You know? You got, you got these killer birds, right? So I'm going to start with the writers. And I'm going to go with Scott Beck and Brian Woods, who wrote okay. A Quiet Place. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going for Jennifer Kent to direct it. 
I know you like that. Come I on. do like that. I'm just curious to see what her career path winds up being. I'm, I know, I'm she's dying really to see. I'm dying to see uh, the Nightingale, her, the Nightingale. her next movie. Hey, it had, that's a bird. Nightingale. Well, <laughs> I feel I feel like uh, the Babadook had almost like bird like quality. I That's don't know. Did I, I just make that up? No, I but it have. just it really jumped to my mind because Jennifer Ken, especially because of the Babadook, because of the way she used sound, the way she used like shadows and yeah. and and imagery that you're not you're not fully like what is this thing? What is this Babadook? And and like. And then you have a strong female lead, you know, you think Tippi Hedren, yeah. who did The Birds. So for me, that just all seems really great. You know, you know, Woods and Beck, who with John Krasinski obviously doing some rewrites, but if we take their original script, you know, not a lot of dialogue. Okay. Y- it just it just seems to fit in my mind at least. So the first person that came to my mind just because I just finished The Haunting of Hill House recently oh, and I'm yeah. obsessed with it still Flanagan. is Mike Flanagan. Yeah. I, at this point, I'm like, give Mike Flanagan everything. Yep. Um, yep. I, I, I thought of him, too, because The Haunting of Hill House. See, <laughs> Jennifer Kent crossed my mind, too, and so did uh, Julia DeCorneau, the one who did uh, Raw. Raw, Also yeah. because Raw has the animal spin, too. There it is, so. yeah. But I, I keep being held back from putting them on the list because... I don't know. I, I'm obviously in no place to speak for them, but for some reason, I get the sense that they wouldn't go for a project like this. Right. The one I really want to see do this, though, is Karin Kusama. Oh, yeah. She's doing some really interesting things right now. I mean, to go from the invitation to something like Destroyer, she's clearly an exceptional filmmaker no matter mm-hmm. what she does, but I also think she has a ton of range. Also, go back and look at Jennifer's body. So Destroyer is super dark and unnerving, and I mean... Un- unappealing, but in a good way where it suits the movie and it suits Nicole Kidman's character in the movie. Then you have The Invitation, which is super atmospheric and gets under your skin and yeah. makes you uneasy. Then you have Jennifer's body, which has this infectious energy that, yeah, it's scary, but that is a highly entertaining movie. Yeah. I feel like she could do anything, and that's why I want to put The Birds, which is one of my favorite Hitchcock movies. Mm. One of my favorite Hitchcock movies that I will fully admit does not age well and no. does deserves a remake but yeah. i will put it in her hands okay i like that one too yeah. yeah i'll take either or and we do you know there was an announcement many years ago that platinum dooms was going to be doing a remake and that platinum dooms did if i, I was actually just because i wanted to see i forgot to look this up before yeah. so the last article about the birds that we ran on collider.com is from july 1st 2015 yeah, and a while ago. It, it does say that um michael bay and platinum dunes they had the rights to remake it and at that time they tapped director i'm not going to be able to pronounce his name yeah um, i'm but, seeing it and I, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it the director of daylight D- sure. diedrich van Royjen. Okay. I think that was we'll an, take that. a noble that's effort. A good, that's a great effort. <laughs> but um, yeah, at that point in time, obviously, the likelihood of that happening so many years later are slim to none. But yeah. they they have it, I guess. I guess, I guess they, they still have it. Well, a Quiet Place was Platinum Dooms <laughs> yeah. as well. Oh, that makes so, sense. Um, you know, we can see if it's still... I would say that it probably still is somewhere in development, uh, what I would call hell now. Maybe it's still there. We haven't heard much since 2015, so that's a long time. Well, you know how the industry is. They like to remake things that were popular before. So even if it's not moving forward at this specific point in time right now, Mm -hmm. odds are it's going to happen sooner rather than later. I would say odds are it's going to happen. We're going to probably see like a horror movie come out where a director is just going to nail something. It always seems to be a director comes out with a horror movie. I'm thinking Overlord director who just got, uh, he's going to do what just came out, Flash Gordon? Flash Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. So you get these horror directors that come out and they nail something. They stick the landing and a horror movie gets a great buzz to it. And then all of a sudden you hear, yep, they were taking for some kind of remake or whatever. It's either that that's going to happen mm. or another studio is going to make a Hitchcock remake that is going to blow up at the box office. Sure. Then everyone's going to gobble up their Hitchcock projects yeah, and remake them. They're going to remake them. And uh, I think The Bird should be remade shot for shot. I'm kidding. That was Gus Van Sant, Psycho, okay. Van Hesch. <laughs> oh, Vince, Vince wow. <laughs> like every red didn't, flag in my mind Didn't just work went out. out. Didn't work oh, out. Oh, yeah, that didn't fly. Yep. Um, all right, next one, Facebook question. Next one question. comes from Facebook, and Sky Patterson writes, Hey, how's it going? It's good. I'm good. I hope you're doing the best job with all the content. 
Uh, you are balancing. Thank you. My question is, what will be the best and worst Stephen King book adaptations between now and 2020? Thank you. Hashtag it chapter two. Hashtag I was pet, wondering if pet we were cemetery. Go there. Oh, we got to do it. Hashtag in the tall grass. Hashtag fire starter. Hashtag the talisman. Hashtag the Tommy knockers. Hashtag hearts. And hashtag collider mailbag. I, I'm glad that you included the collider mailbag. Well, hashtag. of course. We gotta, That's how you get us to pay attention to you because I go through pretty much all of those. Yeah. And um, the, these are great hashtag. Is that they really are. all of them that are coming That's out? That's not all of them. Oh, uh, boy. I know Tommy I mean, you knockers. Know, there's no clear answer to is that all of them because there's so many that have been brought up over the years yeah. that, you know, they're announced, someone picked up the rights, and then you never hear about any forward progress. Yeah. So who knows? But with the ones that we're working with right here, plus a little extra, I purposely put this question after the one that we just answered because I'll just continue with the Flanagan conversation and mm -hmm. I'll actually say after Hill House and also his entire body of work, which I think is very impressive, I think I'm giving the credit to Dr. Sleep and it was difficult to actually pick Dr. Sleep over Pet Cemetery because of all the things here, it's Pet Cemetery that we've seen something from. Right. And I, I really dug that first teaser trailer that they released. But after what I saw in Hill House, which I think has a number of very similar qualities and themes mm -hmm. for what could be in the Doctor Sleep adaptation. And I just think he's a great filmmaker, and I think he might be able to knock that out of the park, and especially you guys well know how much we love that book. So yeah. put good source material in a very capable, talented director's hands, and we could have the perfect combination there. Yeah, and especially Flanagan. You know, we're going to bring up The Haunting of Hill House a lot because I, I just absolutely adored this thing, and I feel like he is at the, the peak of his ability. Yeah. Like he, like he did something with... The Haunting of Hill House that I didn't think could happen, which is scare me so thoroughly, and, and you know which I'm talking I about. There's I do. A, there's a scare we in there. We actually spoke about it yesterday, too. Oh, my God. There's a scare in there that movie, TV, otherwise, it's the one I will always say, until something beats it, the most I've ever been got is yeah. Haunting of Hill House. I like that. And uh, so you you take Doctor Sleep, which is a fantastic story. It was a fantastic read. It was it's an amazing sequel, which you don't really find. But Stephen King doing his Stephen King thing, mm -hmm. um, I, I couldn't be more excited for that. I mean, I look at it Chapter Two as well as yeah. being one of the best. I obviously, have a lot of, of faith in that one. Also, yeah, neck and neck there. Pet Cemetery. We've seen it. It looks yeah. great. Uh, those are my best that I think. Um, the other ones are, it's hard to tell, but there's one that I'm thinking for the worst. What's yours though? Oh, uh, for the, for the worst. I'm going, I'll tell you why, what I'm going with. Okay. Okay. Firestarter. And it's because <laughs> I don't know the director, um, which is neither here nor there. So I okay. have to look, I have to look at the screenwriters. And there's another screenwriter that I, I'm not very sure of, but Akiva Goldsman is... I feel like you've plucked this thought right out of my I? head. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at Akiva Goldsman because he's been involved in a lot of big budget projects over the last, I would say, five, even ten years. Yeah. It didn't turn out too well. They, they just seemed like they were... He, 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 was such, he, is, he is a prolific writer, but mm -hmm. he's been a part of these, like... Transformer writers' rooms, and you know how that turned out. Though Bumblebee might have been, might might be something uh, that that really lands. Hopefully, hopefully it looks that way. But I just I'm just going off of that one because Tommy Knockers. You have James Wan um, who's coming in to to produce that. So you kind of James Wan, you kind of trust. Uh, again, Pet Cemetery, Starry mm -hmm. Eyes directors coming in. Those, that's a fantastic movie. So. It, if I'm circling one, it's Firestarter because it's like, it's it's a lesser known movie. It's a great 80s movie, Drew Barrymore, you know, yeah. conjuring shit with her mind. I get it. But again, Akiva Goldsman, not to, you know, he could nail it. I just haven't really, you know, responded to his material lately. So that was my answer. But then when I read reread the question and I was like, from now until 2020, I don't think we're going to see that Firestarter movie uh, yeah. in 2020 no. or earlier. I also... Uh, the other ones I don't think we're going to see. I don't think we're going to see Tommy Knockers. No, I don't think Tommy Knockers I think they're going to take either. their time with that. The other one is The Talisman. I don't I don't necessarily think we're going to see that either. No. I mean, Steven Spielberg has held the rights to that for what is it like 35 years? Yeah. Just because he gave EW a quote doesn't mean we're going to see it anytime soon. Right. Um the other one 
The other one here that I have that, that I'm on the fence about is In the Tall Grass, which is going to Netflix, and I believe they're aiming for a 2019 release for that. And the director on that one is Vincenzo Natale. And I really like Splice. I'm a little concerned uh, that with the, the general movie going public, this one might go one way or the other. One, because I, I think most of his movies do have, you know, like a very bold, unique uh, touch to them that mm -hmm. can maybe spark a love it or hate it vibe. But also, when I was actually in TIFF, I was talking to a makeup artist who was working on this, and she kept telling me how, like, crazy and batshit it was. Really? I'm like, oh. Okay. So, so, yeah, that, that suits what I know about the director. So I'm just Great. curious to see how that that turns out but yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if I wouldn't be surprised if it's good just not a major crowd pleaser right yeah I buy that okay all, all right. right one more one more last question is a Twitter question that comes from MK Ledbetter who writes we all have our go-to's when we have disappointments in our lives my question is what is your go-to movie for career and then for romantic disappointments and why moreover if they are the same movie what is it about it that is universally uplifting mm, I love that yeah I liked it too that's why I picked it <laughs> yeah oh so many movies come yeah. to mind you have some, I know you have some written I, down I have so. two, two written down okay. so I don't really have very many romantic disappointments because I'm normally the person disappointing the other person ah. but <laughs> when I think about it, I guess I would go Brooklyn. And I think Brooklyn actually suits both things because whether I'm talking about career, romantic, or really any other area in my life, there's something so like warm and full of love and inspiring about Brooklyn. And that's pretty much all I need to kind of like dig myself out of any hole. Mm -hmm. And then another one is uh, a go-to for an inspirational moving, moving uh, story. And it's Eddie the Eagle. Ooh, I just yeah. catch myself watching that one all the time and every single time I watch it I and now I'm like stopping short of spoiling the movie but yeah, it's a true yeah. story it's you know it's story. an underdog story yeah when it gets to the end I just like have to stand up and cheer and yeah. Dewey looks at me and he's like you're weird but I do it every time that's great uh, I have a movie that works for both and I love it and it's a movie that I do that I pop in every once in a while when I'm feeling a little down maybe on career when I I would go to all the time for okay. like relationship like woes and that's swingers I love swingers and it just hit me at that right time it's John Favreau yeah you know Doug Lyman's first movie John Favreau writes it he's in it Vince Vaughn that's his coming out party he was just fantastic in that but there's something about you know Mikey that I identified with because he's coming out to LA he wants to be a stand-up he wants to be an actor he's, he's auditioning auditioning doesn't get it how's that pilot? did you get that pilot no I haven't heard back yet and it's and then they go out and they have fun and he relies on his friends and then he finally does meet somebody at the end whoops spoiler and uh but you know and it's so heartwarming and he gets a little bit of some oomph back into his life after you know staying in his apartment for like five days and not eating and whatnot so it's one of those movies that really gets me career-wise especially because it just gives you hope you know and i identify it because yeah a bunch of dudes running around uh, la you know trying to make it that's what i was doing for many years so yeah. that one works for me on that uh, as far as like maybe taking that in the career and put the romance in there I always go when Harry met Sally just yeah, you know that's always a good pick yeah yeah that's a go-to for a lot of things uh, sideways is another one but yeah. I mentioned sideways all the that time you do, but for good reason I love sideways that, I love that was a good one that's it that's one too sideways is perfect for career and romance because Miles is a writer, his yeah. book doesn't go through, he's back to the drawing board, he screws up all his relationship, and what does he do? He goes and drinks too much wine. I might know something about that. I think we all do. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe not not wine, but, yeah. beer. but the, beer. These glasses might have been filled right. like double digit amount of times last Perfect. weekend. I like that. All right. That's it. Uh, these were great questions. So a huge great thanks questions. to everybody who sent them in. And I will remind you again, send in your questions. Keep them unique, short, and sweet. If you've sent in the same question over and over, it might be time to stop. We want new questions, fresh ones. So please do that. Huge thank you to everybody watching this episode of Mailbag and listening as well if you are. Riley, as always, I'm so happy to have you as thank my co-pilot. Thank you. Guys, we're out. Goodbye. Tune in tomorrow, 4 p.m. PT, for a brand new episode of Collider Movie Talk. Deal.
Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.